Earlier this morning, President Biden spoke with reporters about the apparent assassination attempt, saying he feels Congress should step in to get the Secret Service more help. Thank God the president's okay. I think we got a full report so far. We're down there tonight. But one thing I want to make clear, the service needs more help. And I think the Congress should respond to their needs if they, in fact, need more services. Mary Ellen O'Toole joins us now to discuss this. She's a retired FBI special agent with the Behavioral Analyst Analysis Unit. Um, thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're welcome. I want to ask you about um, your thoughts as to what happened, but I, I also want to ask you about some new information that we have, and that is in the court documents that were just released. We're learning the suspect may have been in this area near the golf course for 12 hours. His phone was found in the wooded area from 1.59 in the morning to 1.31 p.m. yesterday. We know that this incident unfolded between 1.30 and 2 p.m. What does that tell you? Well, that just on its surface would tell me that he is, number one, he had a lot of patience and he was very committed and felt very certain that waiting that long, um, he would run into former President Trump on the golf course. So tells me something about his personality and how important this effort was to him. I want to ask you also, and I'm going to go ahead and read from my computer screen, according to these court documents, that in the area of the tree line from which Ralph fled, agents found a digital camera, two bags, including a backpack, that rifle uh, with a scope, and a black plastic bag containing food, um, the serial number having been obliterated. Does the fact that so much evidence was left at the scene help investigators as they try and piece together motive? It really does help a lot for for him to have left all that behind. And it does go to motive and it goes to how well prepared he was and how long he was prepared to stay there. And I think of all of that um, as a whole, that's very important. And I think also having the Go, um, GoPro camera there to me is also very telling in terms of, again, his personality, that it would seem that he wanted to um, record what he planned to do. And that shows us kind of a sense of self-righteousness because you don't record something like this unless you're very proud of what you're doing. So all of these things really help in, in an evidentiary um, point of view, but it also says a lot to me about his personality. Given the fact that we so far have two charges from this initial court appearance involving the possession of the weapon, the fact that he was a felon possessing it and the fact that it was obliterated, are, are these maybe just some of the the, the first uh, level charges here? Do you expect more given your experience? I definitely would expect more charges as, as they complete the investigation. I think these are just preliminary charges. We'll see more. I also want to ask you about one more thing. The complaint says that the rifle that Ralph had, this particular type of rifle is not manufactured in the state of Florida. Does that tell you that he likely brought it from a different state? Yeah, he probably did bring it from um, from elsewhere, knowing that it was not something that he could access there. I mean, that certainly um, will could change depending on the investigation if he got it from somebody who was in Florida once he arrived there. But it certainly would suggest that he brought it with him. And again, that goes to the whole idea of him thinking ahead and being prepared um, and, and being what we call um, mission oriented, being prepared for his mission. Mary Ellen O'Toole, we have so much new information coming in. I really appreciate you being with us and helping us make sense of some of the details. Thank you. You're welcome.